Here's to whiskey kisses, a peachy taste of sin. might be whiskey time. Season's greetings, whiskey folk. Welcome back to Drinking Out Loud. I am your host, Adam Bradshaw, and today we are here in the Strath Studio on the official Dram Association YouTube channel to present part two of the SNWS December 2020 outturn. That's right, we've got four more whiskies to present to you here today, three brand new ones and one long lost repeat, um, which I'm sure a lot of you will be very excited to see gracing our shelves once again. It's, uh, yeah. It's been a hell of a year, and uh, these are the last four whiskies that we're going to be releasing to you this year. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, tuning in online through all these videos. I've certainly enjoyed. Um, <laughs> I've certainly enjoyed making them, and I've certainly enjoyed watching them back and uh, joining in on the live chat with you all. And hopefully, there's a whole bunch of you on the live chat here right now. Hi guys, it's it's great to see you all. Um, I'll, I'm right there typing with you. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching it during the premiere, please do feel free to leave us a note in the comments. I will reply to the notes um, if and when I get the chance. And yeah, let's let's get on with the show, shall we? We have three brand new whiskies and one long lost repeat. So let's start off. Oh, I've got the booklet this time. Let's start off with whiskey number one today, which is called With an Unbattered Edge. All right, well, here are the official tasting notes. The nose opens on baking parchment and yellow wildflowers. Lots of white pepper, ink, damsons, buttery cereals and brown bread, some daffodils heavy with pollen, bashed up custard creams and wild heather. Eh, custard creams are like a, an, um, a biscuit or a cookie, I guess you'd call them here. Uh, the closest equivalent I've found in North America would be the, the blonde Oreos, you know, the white Oreos, the non-chocolate ones. Uh, water unveils, cornstarch, fresh linens, dry leaves, vegetable soup, green wood, and herbal-infused teas with a splash of mineral oil. The palate is also herbal, lots of dried mixed herbs with tangerine peel, white flowers, uh, chamois leather, um, river reeds, vase water, vase, all right, uh, gauze and pear eau de vie. Are you supposed to put a special type of water in your vase? Is that why my flowers keep dying? Hmm. Uh, reduction brings sweetness in the form of vanilla foam, butter bean hummus, wormwood, hawthorn, hot draft, and motor oil. This sounds like a very rich and varied whiskey. I can't wait to uh, give it a try. So this one's from the Light and Delicate Collection. And uh, yeah, let's see what we've got. It is with an unbattered edge. It was distilled on the 29th of January 2009. Uh, it's from the Speyside region. It's a second Phil X bourbon barrel. 
It is 10 years aged and it is 56.5% ABV cask strength. And for those of you tuning into this video who might have found us randomly on the internet, um, yeah, this is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Outturn. The SNWS is a long standing member driven independent bottler um, and they produce some of the best whiskies on the planet. Um, as they produce, they don't create the whiskies, they don't distill it, they search out for the best whiskey casks and they, they purchase them. They, uh, sometimes finish them or mature them a little bit more in their own warehouse and they release them under their own branding as you can see here and part of that is they don't tell you what the distillery is um, they just tell you uh, you know some tasting notes sometimes a bit of a clue actually and there is actually a clue to the distillery in the name of this whiskey with an unbattered edge uh, but they'll also give you a cask number this is 6.37 so this is the sixth distillery that they've purchased a uh, cask from, and it's the 37th cask that they've purchased from that distillery. Uh, they've been going for quite some time now, well, 37 years or something, um, like 25,000 plus members worldwide, and we are one of four stores in Canada, which we are lucky enough to be partners of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Canadian chapter. should also mention this is the, uh, the outturn or the amount of bottles that they got from the cask of this is 200, so this is one of 200 bottles available. Uh, throughout the world, not here in Canada. We, uh, we only get a, a small portion of that. And uh, yeah, here at the Strath, we actually uh, generally get two cases of everything when we can. Uh, so we have 11 bottles of this whiskey available and they will actually be available um, when I reveal the price. Uh, it's uh, probably in about five minutes from now. So as soon as I say it's available, you can go to strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS and all of the latest whiskeys will appear right there on that page. You know, um, I definitely recommend going and loading that page up right now, seeing what's there and uh, hitting refresh uh, rather than having to type it all in when I reveal a particularly interesting whiskey, which I'm revealing several particularly interesting whiskies today, so it uh, pays to be prepared. Um, I've done altogether too much talking and not enough drinking. This is called drinking out loud, not just talking out loud, so let's crack her open, shall we? All right. That was a very high-pitched uh, pop there, wasn't it? Not sure what brought that on, but it was a very cheery sound. And there's the glug. All right, with an unbattered edge. Mmm. That's very pleasant, I have to say. Smells oily in a, a tempura kind of a way, you know, that light white batter. I don't think that's the kind of battered edge they're talking about necessarily, but yeah, interesting. Brown bread, parchment. Yeah, lovely light nose to start off with. Kind of get the custardy kind of notes. I'm not sure of the custard cream biscuit specifically, but definitely that sort of soft, powdery, creamy custard note. It mentions daffodils. Um, I can see where they're coming from there. There's a, a little, little bit of a floral thing going on there, but it's also, again, quite vegetal. It's... Mm. That's... that's uh... mm. Very nice. And it's, this is actually a distillery that I'm not too familiar with as well, so... Um, it's, I mean, that's the interesting thing with single cask whiskies, especially through the SNWS. We always end up with whiskies that are not necessarily um, um, the regular sort of character you'd get from that distillery. That's the beauty of single casks. They're all unique and interesting. But this one, uh, yeah, this one I didn't really know what to expect. Sorry, I didn't really know what to expect with this one because it's not so. It's not really, not really a distillery I'm particularly familiar with. Sorry, the ooh there was. Um, Poached pears, you know, the when you, you, you do the pears in the red wine? Mm. With uh, cloves and cinnamon. That's quite nice. All right, slash of our, let's see what it's like. Mm. Mm. Peppery, a little citrus uh, on the nose, on the palate, sorry. A little tiny touch of licorice really quite light. Um, I say citrus, specifically sort of that lemon, maybe even like a Maya lemon. Mm. 
yeah, and there's a, there is something ever so slightly leathery about it. It, it mentions uh, like chamois or chamois leather. I'm not never quite sure how to pronounce that one. Um, yeah, soft, soft leather. Interesting. It also mentions motor oil. I'm not sure I'm getting that kind of deep oiliness, but there is something a little bit synthetic tasting about it in the best way possible. That's, that's an asterisk word. Um, synthetic, but in a good way. It tastes, yeah, ever so slightly, I said on the nose, actually oily, but in a, yeah, but not in a greasy, dirty, oily way, more of in a clean, you know, actually my only real experience with motor oil is when things have gone wrong with it. So um, maybe motor oil smells quite clean when you first put it in. It certainly doesn't when it comes back out. Hmm. Hmm. I'd also I'd possibly say more of a cooking oil thing for me on the palate. It's maybe a little bit more olive oily. A peppermint oil is a is a nice. Hmm. Yeah, there's a nice cooling, cooling minty kind of effect on the back palate there. A couple of drops of water. See what we uh, see what we're playing with in terms of uh, opening it up and seeing if there's much change with the dilution. Hmm. But yeah, while I let that uh, water settle, I may as well tell you where it's from, eh? So distillery number six is anyone guessed from the uh, from from the name? Well, with an unbattered edge, it's actually a quote from the Scottish play, which you're apparently not supposed to name in case something terrible happens. Um, I, I I'm not a superstitious type. It's Macbeth, um, and it's a character in Macbeth called Macduff, uh, who says, uh, "Or else my sword with an unbattered edge, I." Sheath again undeeded, which, yeah. Hmm, clean. I'm guess I'm guessing the the name there is referring to sort of a clean, un unburdened by dirt and guilt and death. <laughs> hmm. Certainly very pleasant. So yeah, Macduff, really interesting distillery. You won't see any official bottlings with the. Uh, with the name Macduff, um, but you will see them as an official bottling. They actually choose to release their whiskies under a different name, uh, Deverin, or sometimes Glendeverin. Uh, they were built in the 1960s during a particularly large whiskey boom. Um, yeah, and I, for one, I'm glad they were because I'm I quite enjoy this one. The uh, the the condensed version of the tasting notes on the front here say so it's uh, wonderfully cereal. Tertiary, gentle, and complex dram. Herbal, earthy, nutty, oily, and fragrant. Um, ideal for contemplative daytime sipping. I should probably read these notes more often because that's that's uh, that's quite different actually to the uh, the, the long form tasting notes in the book. Um, I'm not sure I get much of the nuttiness, but I mean, then again, the olive oil taste. Olive oil is kind of a nutty kind of a flavor, isn't it? And earthy. Um, yeah, contemplative daytime sipping. Now there's a yeah. As a pro tip, this is a this is a daytime whiskey, a contemplative daytime time whiskey. Yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful dram, and I can uh, officially say that is for sale right now at uh, strathliquor.com forward slash SNWS. You can pick this up uh, for one fifty two ninety six, which is a fantastic price. Uh, I should mention at that price one fifty two ninety six, you do have to be. An SNWS member already to pick this one up, uh, and I should also mention that um, there was a little confusion with the uh, the the thirty three released a couple of weeks ago. Anytime something goes to a draw, you do have to be a member to enter the draw as well. So if you if you do see a whiskey that's going to a draw and you want to be part of that draw, quickly become a member, um, sign up at SNWS.ca or purchase a bottle that's hundred and eighty dollars or more, or purchase the membership kit. Um, once you've done that, you can then enter the drawer as a full-fledged member as well. Um, but yes, this one is under $180, which means, uh, yeah, you've got to be a member to buy it. You cannot become a member by purchasing this bottle, um, unfortunately. But hopefully a fair few members will take it upon themselves to uh, give this one a home for Christmas, because this is, yeah, a great example of a, of a, a second fill bourbon cask space side style whiskey with beautiful light complexities. Mm. Very nice. Well done, Macduff. That is a fantastic way to start off the tasting. 
But next, we're heading into the the depths of time, the mists of time. We're actually we're actually able to uh, bring back an old release of SNWS, which hasn't been available anywhere in BC for a very long time. Um, I don't know if it got lost in the warehouse. I don't know what happened to it, but it's it, it's here now. We managed to uh, to pull it from the uh, from the BC warehouse, and yeah, I think this was released either I think maybe early 2019, maybe late 2018. Um, I have very fond memories of it, and I can't wait to uh, to bring this one back out for everyone. The next whiskey, ladies and gentlemen, is called Exotic, Exciting, Edgy. <laughs> All right, let's move this guy over. We were preparing an Indian spiced salad using dry curry leaves, fenugreek, and mustard seed, mango chutney, red chili, coriander, and mint. To drink, we had jasmine-scented green tea accompanied by Caribbean spiced gulab jamun, golden fried balls of milk pastry soaked in honey and saffron syrup, one of my favorite desserts of all time, and I, I bring it up in my own tasting notes quite often. It's... Mm. Uh, with water, we get aromas uh, of a bowl of Malaysian bird's nest soup. You might want to try it before looking it up. That's ominous. Uh, I like to know what I'm eating, generally. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and Moroccan pickled aubergines with garlic, coriander, and cilantro. Now, that is something I know and I do very much enjoy. The taste, zesty avocado salad with roasted walnuts, celery, and mustard cress sprouts, all washed down with a glass of sweet spiced red vermouth, de Jerez. Mm, Spanish vermouth. Mmm, very, very nice. So, exotic, exciting, edgy. We are bringing this one back. This is spicy, this is sweet. This is glorious. Look at it. It is 36.135. It's one of only 138 bottles came out of this cask. Uh, the cask in question was a refill barrel ex bourbon that was uh, distilled on the 15th of August, 1997. We've got a 90s bottle here, which is really, really cool. It's 19 years aged. Uh, it's again a Speyside region. Cask strength, of course, at 56.7% ABV. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read the short form as well. This Indian spice salad, Caribbean spice gulab jamun, uh, followed by bird's nest soup and Moroccan pickled aubergine, clearly out of the ordinary. Ah, well, fair enough. It uh, didn't really add too much to the, the long form there, but uh, don't you worry. I remember this one very, very well, and I can't wait to open it up, so I'm not going to. Here we go. Ooh, it's tight. I think it might have got a bit cold in the warehouse there. There we go. Lovely. Look at that colour. Mm. Oh. This was such an interesting whiskey the first time we tried it, because almost everyone in the room thought there was something strange going on with the cask. No one thought this was just a straight-up bourbon cask. Ah, oh, yeah, it doesn't smell like a straight-up refill ex bourbon. It, it smells like it's got some interesting sherry or wine notes in there. It smells like it's maybe a blend of several different casks. It's quite complex. Oh, look at that. That is... That is just beautiful, that is. <sighs> yeah. All right, what's, what's coming out? on top here on the nose. Green tea, yeah, jasmine tea. Jasmine and green tea, very much. Again, a little mint this time on the nose, or on the palate on whiskey number one, but yeah, a little little mint on the uh, on the nose in this one. Quite fruity, a little bit of dark fruit, uh, a little bit of plums and prunes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm getting any of the like the mango chutney or the mustard and things that it's uh, it's mentioning in there. Or the gulab jamun, but I'm definitely I'm getting quite a syrupy, like a golden syrup kind of a nose. All right, slancha. Hmm. Oh yeah. There is so much flavor in this glass. It is just. It's a Pandora's box of whiskey. Everything is just mm, condensed. It's a black hole of flavor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a collapsing star of fatty esters. 
It's big and it's rich. It's viscous. I don't know if you can see it on the glass. It's clinging to it. Mm. And as you can imagine, 138 bottles out of a whole barrel. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of condensing here. Um, it's 56.7%, which is actually quite high, I'd say, for a 19-year-old. Mm. But part of the reason for the big, rich, complex flavors in this one is actually uh, to do with uh, the distillation method. So um, what is the code? 36, 135, 36 is actually a distillery called Ben Rinus. Ben Rinus is particularly interesting because of its partial triple distillation that it used to do. Um, it started in 1974. It's a style that you can still see today at places like Mortlock and in Springbank, um, where they um, they triple distill part of the spirit and mix it back in with the double distilled. And it's all very complicated and everyone's got their own way of doing it. And like they, they often give it a strange decimal. I think Mortlock says it's 1.84 times distilled or something silly. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a complicated way of, of getting even more flavor into the whiskey. And they actually stopped doing that at this distillery in 2007. Uh, which is quite a shame. Um, but it makes the whiskey like this quite a rarity these days because, you know, this is actually distilled 10 years before they stopped doing it, so it's well within the uh, the time frame. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not going to be long until it's uh, impossible to find any of the whiskey from this uh, Ben Rennes distillery that is actually partially triple distilled, which is one of the things that made it so unique and interesting. So yeah, blast from the past, both in... Uh, the fact that it's a repeat bottling from uh, over a year ago, and also the fact that it's uh, an old school style that uh, is not actually made at this distillery anymore. Mm. Add a drop of water to this. So the downside of it being this uh, repeat is that we did only manage to get one case of this because there was only one case uh, that was found. Um, so there are only five bottles of this one available. Um, it is available right now on strathlicker.com for you to purchase. It is $203.39, which is the same price it was when it first released. We haven't we haven't fiddled with it. We haven't made it go. Uh, we haven't inflated it with the uh, with the, the the inflation that whiskey has seen in the last uh, couple of years. That is a I think a fantastic price. Um, it is open, of course, to any non-members. Uh, if you if if there's any left, uh, it might have already sold out by now. I think that's a stunner. Um, but yes, for, for any any members who want to pick it up, of course, uh, feel free to right away. And if there are any left afterwards, if anyone would like to join the SNWS with this bottle, then feel free to. It is over that $180 um, uh, threshold there. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice. All right. Moving on then to uh, a whiskey which I would say is... Um, Probably one of the m most requested whiskies I've had in modern memory in terms of people calling me up. Um, of course, the Strath was the only store um, that didn't manage to get their whiskey in time for a full release at the beginning of the month. The other three stores, uh, Legacy and uh, Kensington Wine Market and Ken Cork, across in Alberta and in Vancouver, um, did get their, uh, their full out turn. And there's one bottle in particular which was incredible incredibly sought after that we have yet to reveal. And uh, that is the next whiskey in the lineup. And I can't wait to try it because, yeah, people are, um, people, people have lost their minds for this one a little bit. I, uh, yeah. Let's see what all the fuss is about. It's called Formidable Chocolate, which is a pretty fantastic name in, uh, right, right off the, uh, the bat there. And the tasting notes are as follows. A deep and dark nose ventured through dimly lit wine cellars towards wooden crates packed with walnuts, bananas, and dried orange skin. Pineapple sizzled on the hot plate of a steam engine as a thin layer of soot-coated tea leaves and tobacco. Then truffles and dark chocolate brought an oily weight that grew with ginger and sage toward a punchy crescendo. Water illuminated wine notes of oily Rieslings and Tokai dessert wine, uh, whilst sweet elements ventured into toffee and candy floss, a lively and tingly sensation lasted onto a huge finish that combined the chocolate and mushrooms with leather, oak, crushed black pepper. And uh, yeah, after a certain amount of time in a bourbon uh, barrel, it was transferred into an Oloroso hogshead. A first fill Oloroso hogshead, actually. So, 
formidable chocolate. Mm. Sounds like a formidable whiskey. Yes, and okay, so the stats. It is one of 278 bottles that it got out of that hogshead. It is a space side as well. It is from the 10th of May, 2004, bottled at 15 years aged. It is 58.7%, and it is code 1. 0.215. We have another one, guys. And uh, we had a one earlier this year. It went down very well, as ones generally do. Um, and I am very excited to try this one because we um, we we actually recently uh, revealed and released a um, an official bottling from this distillery that's exclusive to the Strath, which is also cast strength and a couple of years younger than this. And I can't wait to see what the SNWS managed to uh, managed to get from this distillery, uh, especially as it's very, very, very rare to see uh, whiskey from this distillery released to independent bottlers that was actually matured in a sherry cask. Um, and in this case, yes, the SNWS didn't get it in a sherry cask. They actually then finished it themselves in a sherry cask. So this is probably the closest that we're going to see uh, to a uh, to a cask strength 15 year old official bottling from these guys. Um, as the, as probably the closest that we're going to see um, for quite some time because you just don't you don't see uh, sherry cask um, indie bottlings of these guys very very often, especially at this age as well. So yeah, 1.215. Let's see what it's all about, shall we? Very nice. I'm expecting the color's probably gonna be quite something because I can see it through the glass. Oh yeah, that's, that's pleasant. Hmm, that. That is a beautiful amount of sherry on the nose. So, I, I find it's very, it, it, I find it must be very difficult for, uh, for distilleries or for bottlers like the SNWS to capture the effect of a full sherry maturation using only a finish. But this, if I was to guess from the nose, I wouldn't necessarily guess that this was a finish. The sherry is is, is there, but it doesn't taste. Oh, it doesn't smell. Sorry, um, overwhelming. It doesn't smell like it's on a you know a separate level from the rest of the experience. It smells integrated. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't smell like a separate part of the whiskey. It's very very pleasant. All right, it's it's begging to touch lips, so I'm uh, I'm going in for it. Hmm. Oh yeah. Hmm. Beautiful balance of sweet and savory. It's it's nutty. It's it's figs and walnuts are the first things that jump to mind. It's also a little creamy figs. Like actually, there's a there's a um a a gluten free um. It was everything free, a gluten-free, vegan, uh, actually it wasn't dairy-free, but it was a gluten-free, vegan dessert I made for uh, Christmas a few years ago when I was, uh, when I was able to have a Christmas where I was able to, you know, visit friends and things uh, that I took to a party uh, that was literally dates and figs and walnuts crushed together into a paste and then formed into a little bowl. Then you put uh, some cream, some goat's cheese and a raspberry on top. This is the whiskey equivalent to that dessert. Mm. I might make those again, actually. Mm. Oh, that's... Mm, that's Stella. Mm. Have to admit, not finding the chocolate, but the sweet wines and the dried fruits and even the sort of sooty tea that it mentioned, tobacco, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hopefully I'll find the chocolate maybe after a touch of water, possibly. Mushrooms. Love love it when I find mushrooms as a tasting note. Hmm. 
I'm plan that. All right, let's. Uh... Add a touch of water to this. So, where, where's it from? What is Distillery One? Well, well, uh, of course, I mentioned uh, previously in this video that the uh, the naming convention, the first digit there that uh, refers to the distillery, is the order in which they bottle from. And this is actually the first distillery that the SNWS ever bottled. Um, and it's kind of awkward because it's a distillery that doesn't like people knowing that you can get independent bottles from them. Um, and it's a distillery that is not, but sounds very much like Fen Glarkless. Um, love, love a good Fen Glarkless. We, we had, a, had an SNWS Fen Glarkless earlier this year. We had a Blackadder Fen, Fen, Fen Glarkless. Um, it's, a, it's a great mythical distillery. And uh, yeah, Fen Glarkless is a... Uh, um, or the, the distillery that sounds like Fen Glarkless is one of the last family-owned distilleries in Scotland. It's, uh, it's an absolute classic. Um, everything that they release as an official bottling is 100% Oloroso cask uh, from a specific bodega as well, which I think is the reason that uh, the grants who own them um, specifically don't like people finding out that other whiskey is distilled by them because they've got this, they, they push and promote this idea that everything they do is ex Oloroso cask. And of course, that's not actually true. They, as as we can see here, they actually produce a lot of whiskey that gets matured in in American oak in ex bourbon. Um, they just don't release it as a Glenfarclas. Uh, whoops, I, I let slip again. Um, but yeah, that's it's it's uh, it's an interesting interesting thing that they've got going there. Um, yeah, they, they they sell a lot to to blenders. They sell a lot to independent bottlers. But yeah, they don't like having their name put on it because it's it's often very very different to their house style. Uh, this I would say is not very different to the house style, despite being matured initially in ex bourbon. The uh, the oloroso finish has brought this much more in line with what you'd expect from a um, Fen Glarkless Glen <laughs> Hmm. And. I think one of the reasons why this was so sought after when it was released in the rest of Canada is the price, I have to say. Um, so I, I'm about to reveal and release this, uh, but I have to say absolutely one bottle per member maximum on this whiskey. Um, I was toying with the idea of going to a draw, um, but I... You know, it's so close to Christmas. I right now, I, I want to I want to make sure people know if they're getting it or not with uh, with you know <laughs> with enough time um, to be able to pick it up and whatnot. So I'm not going to put it to a drawer. I am going to get uh, first come first served, which means of course the people watching this uh, live um, as it airs um, on the YouTube premiere are getting first dibs. It is available right this second at SNWS, uh, sorry, at strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS for $179.91. So of course you have to be a member to purchase this. You are, This is not eligible for non-members. It's under that 180 mark. And uh, yeah, it's available right now and it'll be sold out probably in a matter of a minute or two. So uh, yeah. Pause the video right here, go buy it, come back. There we go. Um, yeah, the link is in the live chat already to uh, to help you get there. And uh, best of luck to all of you. Uh, I will be very strictly saying only one per member. It's it's limited to your account. You can only buy one at a time, but don't try buying one and going back in and buying another because I will just refund it and uh, you won't actually get it. Don't even try. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully our, our local members are on the ball to be able to get this, because I know there was a lot of competition from guys across the country who didn't manage to get it in other areas. Hmm. Just beautiful. Yeah. Good job, SNWS. You, you bowled a very nice Feng Glarkless there. Hmm. So we've got one last whiskey this year. This is the final, final release of a new whiskey that is going to be on Drinking Out Loud for 2020. And uh, it's a personal favorite of mine. I've got to say, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to give this one a shot. This is called Burnt Heather and Honey. And here are the official tasting notes. We found various things on the nose, chalky sweets and dulce de leche, dried flowers and hay, slate, oily rags and salt and pepper chips. Eventually, wisps of light smoke. That smoke was stronger on the palate, etching the tongue with pan-fried red chilies, wood ash and camphor, all wrapped in honey and barley sweetness. 
The reduced nose balanced burnt heather stems and wood, fire embers with dark toffee, marble cake and marzipan. Now we tasted butterscotch, petit four and brown sugar on porridge, some earthy notes, truffle, dried mushrooms and cured meats, and light smoke, char and tar, especially on the finish. Char and tar, love it. Oh yeah. Ooh. What a way to finish off a year. What a, what a year. I feel like bursting into a rendition of Old Lang Syne. Um, but this is Burnt Heather and Honey. This is one of 310 bottles from a refill hogshead that was distilled on the 6th of March 2006, which happens to be my 18th birthday, um, funnily enough. Uh, this is bottled at 12 years old. This is a Highland malt. It is 58.4%. And this is actually from a series of whiskies from this distillery um, that happened to have been uh, distilled on my birthday. Uh, I've actually been collecting them a little bit. I, I might pick this one up as well. And this is also, funnily enough, from one of my all-time favorite distilleries, 66.136. And uh, a lot of you who know me will already know what 66 is because... As I said, one of my all-time favorite distilleries. I have a tendency to not shut up talking about it. And so, uh, yeah, I will reveal what that is shortly. But first, let's rip her open and give her a try. Burnt Heather and Honey. Very, very nice. Ooh, tight cork again. And there we are. That is very sweet. I am not used to this distillery being so sweet on the nose. That is, oh, it smells like a smoked hop knob dunked in syrup. Oh, that is rich, oaty, smoky. Oh man. Oh, oh, this might have to be a Christmas present to myself. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that is absolutely delightful. Speaking of Christmas presents to myself, I hope you like the t-shirt. Um, this is actually a prototype. I bought it for myself to see uh, how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, we're actually gonna start selling these at strathliquor.com soon. So uh, keep an eye out, you can get one for yourself and you too can tell everyone that it is officially whiskey time. Hmm. And it's even almost not quite life-size Glencairn there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my, that is Thai sweet chili tiger prawns cooked a little too much, you know, on a, a real high heat with a lot of char on an Australian barbecue. Mm. On a wood-fired barbecue, actually. I don't know why Australia, I think that's just, just the standard shrimp on a barbie thing, isn't it? It's probably being a little racist there. Um, could be anywhere, not necessarily Australia. But yeah, anyone can put a shrimp on a barbie. Oh yeah, mmm, lemongrass, yeah, it's like, mmm, yeah, getting a big tiger shrimp and dipping it in honey and soy, like a soy honey glaze, and cooking it on a real hot smoky fire, um, but skewered on a spear of lemongrass, you've got like three of them on one spear, oh, that. Oh, probably wrapped in prosciutto too. I'm getting, I'm getting a smoked meat thing here. That is just such a perfect example of why I love this distillery so much. We've had a couple of unpeated whiskies from this distillery uh, in recent times, and whilst whilst they're good, it's the peated stuff that made me fall in love with it. This is just just an excellent way to finish a long, tiring year. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Robin Kelly. I needed this. Mm. Mm. It's coffee. It tastes like coffee as well. Maybe coffee cake. Smoky coffee cake. That's a weirdly satisfying thing to say. Smoky coffee cake. Try it at home. Ah, alright. Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush any longer. 
This is Distillery 66, and for those who aren't in the know, Distillery 66 is Ardmore. Again, a personal favourite of mine. And actually, I just said we, we've had a couple of uh, unpeated whiskies from this distillery in the past. They, uh, have, internally at least, are known as Ard Laird, but this being peated is from Ardmore, a distillery that started in 1898 by Adam Teacher, uh, specifically for his Teacher's Blend, which is still very popular today. Uh, yeah, just a absolute stunner. One of the last distilleries to use coal-fired stills. Um, very traditional peated Highland malt. Just, yeah. This is a 58.4%. It tastes... There's no... There's a lot of fire, but there's very little burn. This is, this is so easy to drink. Mm. I haven't even bothered adding water yet, because... Honestly, I love it so much without water, but for science, I will add a couple of drops just to see what happens. The things I do for science. Hmm. Actually smells a little less sweet on the nose. I don't mind that. Yeah, it tastes like a toffee pop. That's a smoked toffee pop. I'm getting the marzipan it mentions now, actually, with uh, with a bit of water. You can tell I like it because I've almost finished it. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little, little bit of marzipan, which I've recently discovered I actually quite like. Actually, thank you to longtime member Frederica Verspore because uh, she drops off some chocolates for our staff, which we are very, very grateful for, all individually wrapped and everything. And also in there was some, uh, some marzipan, some high-quality, good, locally uh, produced, I believe, marzipan, which... Uh, as I've mentioned before in tasting, it's one of the few, very, very few things that I generally would say I dislike. Um, but I decided to try it again because I've not had, you know, I've not had any marzipan in a good five or six years. And I don't think I've ever had, like, proper, good, nice marzipan. And I'm happy to say that was delicious. And I'm probably going to go and buy some more. <laughs> um, apparently, I like marzipan now. So, hooray. Hmm. And actually, yes, thank you to Frederica for that. And thank you to everyone um, in the local whiskey scene who's dropped off um, gifts, not only for Christmas, but throughout the year. Um, I've had homemade jams. We've had cakes. We've had pies. We've had all sorts of wonderful, beautiful things uh, from, from UR members that have kept us going through some trying times. Uh, so on behalf of the entire Strath, thank you very much for your kind and beautiful gifts. Um, it means a lot to us. It really does. And uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get you back in, in return. At some point, we'll uh, we'll be able to get you in for a, a special dram in the studio or something, I'm sure. Looking forward to that. Um, I've got to, got to say, um, uh, I, I was really, really enjoying the fact that we managed to start doing the in-person tastings. But, uh, yeah, I also really, especially uh, for the safety factor, I really enjoy doing these online ones as well and being able to talk to you all in the, in the live chat. So, yeah, thank you very much for a... A trying but uh, deeply satisfying year, in a sense. With everything that went wrong, so many things still went very right. And as a whiskey community, um, I think I think we actually grew much closer together throughout 2020. So thanks to that, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Slash of art, good night, and this whiskey is available right now at strathlicker.com slash SNWS for $180.78, 180.78, which means, yes, technically, if you're not a member yet, you could buy this one and become a member. Um, so members who want it, get in there quickly because, you know, other people can buy it. Um, yeah, that is a fantastic whiskey. I'm going to put up a screen now with all of the uh, all of the releases from this uh, from this tasting. Um, thank you very much once again. And uh, should old acquaintance be forgot, nether brought to light, should old acquaintance be forgot for the sake of old Lang Syne. Good night. I'll see you in the new year. night
streets are drawing into shorter days I hear the old folk and the country people say Don't fear the dark, nature has it all in hand Time to reflect and renew the tired land So we'll stoke the fire Settle down beneath the starry sky and endure the winter passing by. I see the frost etched upon the glass in the morning sun. He soon moves fast. But he'll be back to claim the frozen ground With each clear day he surely will be found The geese fly south to find a warmer home On the weedy blue he soldiers on alone Children's laughter it crackles in the air Sparks fly high and they catch them if they dare So we'll stoke the fire and light the lamp Turn our backs in from the damp Settle down beneath the steady sky Endure the winter passing Snowdrops arise with promise of the spring There's talk and wonder at what the year might bring The blackbird starts to thicken up her nest On the early lamb he takes a snowy step But the north wind's grip it tightens with his chill against their will so we'll stoke the fire and light the lamp turn our backs in from the dam settle down beneath the steady sky endure the winter passing by so we'll stoke Settle down beneath the steady sky.